Okay, so this device running Android 12 currently is from Mikotronics. It's the most powerful SBC that I've ever tried. Uh, it's marketed as a mini PC, uh, quite marketed to the professional side of it as well. The build quality is really, really high. Uh, it's also silently cooled, so it's got a nice heat sink, which I'll take it apart and have a look at later. But I wanted to show the setup that I'm using at the moment. So you can see I've got USB-C going into my USB-C WiMAX it monitor, and uh, I've also got an HDMI cable as well. So what happens if I switch it on? So let's just power it up. Just the one power plug for the device, which is actually powering the monitor. There you go, you can see the monitors come on. And uh, it's already pre-installed with Android 12, and it's already configured with the Play Store as well, so it was ready to go. So I've got it set up with a mouse and keyboard, but I wanted to show the touch on it first because this game looks really good. So this is the Elder Scrolls Blades, and uh, it's just an Android game from the Play Store, uh, which I downloaded on it. The Play Store works really well on this, but the graphics are really, really nice. Uh, so you can see here it says tap the ground to walk and we can look around up and down and so on and the graphics are really nice on this you can see the trees blowing in the wind you can see the lens flare uh, and if we keep walking well let's put some sound on this obviously it's got bluetooth but i'm going to plug in to the analog it's got three and a half mil i'm not sure if it's a microphone in and uh, but this is definitely a headphone out so if we pop the audio up a bit so here you go you can see my sword here so if i want to walk I can just tap and you can see I can go through these here. I can hear some people in the distance. Now here we go. The graphics are decent. It's actually quite an immersive game. The sound is awesome as well. So you've got to press and hold to attack. I'm not quite sure of the game mechanics yet, but actually it seems nice and responsive. Or oh, maybe you swipe as well, do you? Oh, there you go. Really impressive with how this looks. Uh, to me, it looks pretty much like a PC game. The graphics are excellent, really, really nice, and super responsive as well. Anyway, let's try something else. I'm gonna plug it into my monitor so I can show it on screen capture. So it came with a remote control and a little USB dongle. So if we plug in the little USB dongle in one of the sockets on the front here, USB 2 will be fine for that. Uh, and now I can move around, you can see it's moving the icons, but if I press the little mouse button, I get a mouse pointer and I can move the mouse pointer about and then I can switch back to uh, the quicker way of navigating with the tiles and everything. But you can also see we've got page control, we've got volume control, delete, mute, microphone. I haven't tried Google Assistant yet, I'll give that a try in a minute, play pause. Uh, so. Useful if this is in a hard to reach area and you want to just be able to control it and launch something or start a demo or a display or something. What's the weather like today? Currently in Barnstaple, it's 66 degrees and mostly sunny. Today, it'll be sunny with a forecasted high of 67 and a low of 46. Yeah, so the voice assistant works. I wonder if it will launch something. Launch Chrome. Opening, Chrome Beta. Oh, there you go, so it's working fine. This is definitely great as a media center. It's worth having a look to see if we can put Kodi on here. So let's search the App Store. I'm using the mouse and keyboard just because I find it easier. So install. And it seems to be really fast. So I was installing games, emulators, transferring things from USB yesterday, and everything seemed to work really well, really nice and responsive. So you can see that's all done. So if I wanted to open that, it'll open straight away. There's probably some sort of uh, setup that you need to do. Oh, it looks like, oh, it looks like it doesn't need a lot. And uh, navigating around, yeah, nice and quick. And I could pair an Xbox controller as a way of navigating around, but I'm just gonna plug in my little Xbox 360 adapter uh, because this means that I don't need to do any pairing. And you can see it's detected my controller, let's say yes. And it looks like we can set it all up. So A, B, X, and you can see that's working absolutely fine with that. So it's mentioned in the docs that this is 8K compatible. So let's try an 8K file. I've downloaded one, uh, so it's in my downloads folder. So if I play this one, and I'll use Kodi to play this. So let's go down to the bottom here, hit more and Kodi, and see what happens. 
Pop some volume on. And I've only got a 1080 monitor, but that still looks pretty decent on that. Yeah, that looks pretty nice. Uh, so if I, well, let's use the mouse and go for information. No, not information. Let's try the settings one and video settings. And you can see even using the menus and everything isn't affecting this. So HEVC 7680 by 4320. Yeah, really impressed with that. That looks amazing. So how do I quit out of that? So home button, let's go back. Now let's try the Dolphin emulator. And the Dolphin emulator works with Wii or GameCube. With GameCube, I can just use my standard controller. Um, but for, for Wii games, I need the Dolphin bar, which I've got on the top here. This allows you to use a standard Wii controller uh, with an Android box or Windows or Raspberry Pi. Any of this works. Uh, I just need to plug it in. Now on the front here, I've got my Xbox controller. I've got a USB stick and I've got my mouse and keyboard. So I've uh, only got the USB-C connection. So I've just got a normal USB-A on the end of the Dolphin bar. I've put a USB-C adapter on there. Let's plug that in. Uh, it should light up, yeah, the blue lights come on. If I press the A button, then that should match up, yeah, and that shows that it's working. So if I now launch Dolphin, and let's go with Ghost Squad, and allow Dolphin Emulator to access the May Flash. Uh, so let's hit OK. And it says Wii Remote 1 connected. So we should be up and running now. So I'll switch over to screen capture. Now it's definitely, the point is definitely affected by that sun coming in. So I've put a sheet up so uh, it blocks it a bit. It's working a lot better now. Yeah, that's working nicely. Oh, missed him. Yeah, that's working really nice. Happy with that. Got a couple of other Wii games on here. Uh, Super Mario Brothers Wii works absolutely fine. Uh, Dave Mirror BMX Challenge, which was a terrible game anyway, uh, doesn't work. It doesn't seem to like my Dolphin bar. It, re it says plug in a proper controller. So let's go with GameCube. And uh, all of the games I've tried on here work absolutely fine. Now, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3, I found much harder to emulate than a lot of other games on here. Um, but I'm going to do Dave Mirror first of all, because it's one of my favourite games of all time. Now this game runs really well on this, lovely and smooth. Uh, you occasionally get it where it comes up with an exception, um, but uh, you can ignore it and it, it won't ask you again. But I get exactly the same thing on my Mac, so I am used to it. But um, yeah, it just runs so well. Lovely and smooth. That was nice. So let's try something else. Oh, let's show Tony Hawk's because uh, I found the audio really stuttery on other systems and I haven't changed anything on this. This is stock, so I haven't changed any settings at all. And as you can see, it's lovely and smooth and works really well. The environment looks great. It's just such a good game. And audio is perfect as well. No stuttering or anything like that. So let's try something else. Uh, we we'll just, just do a bit of Tomb Raider, so all the cutscenes are absolutely fine with the audio and uh, how it looks and everything. Let's skip all the cinematics. There we go, looking nice and smooth. And I have played a bit of this, and uh, yeah, I was I was definitely pleased with how well it ran. Yeah, running great. So let's try a bit of PS2, which runs really well on this. So I've only got one game on here, but Burnout is a game that I've had trouble trying to play before. It's definitely been very, very slow on other systems, especially Android. So this runs great on this system. Uh, I haven't changed any settings. I've enabled Vulkan and uh, I've enabled the FPS, but that's all I've done. Oh, I seem to crash into that car every time. But yeah, it seems to handle it really nicely. Uh, let's go with a bit of boost. And try and drift around here. Yeah, very, very nice. Yeah, very happy with that. Running great.
So this computer is passively cooled, so it's completely silent, there's no moving parts in it. So I figured I'd try and see uh, how hot it gets. So if I launch Ada64, which is here, and we can have a look at the thermals. So at the moment it's running at 28.7 uh, degrees, so it's nice and cool. I've only just turned it back on again. So uh, go back to File Browser, or File Manager actually, as I installed that, I prefer it. And let's play this 8K file. So this is a five minute file. So five minutes playing at 8K, it'll be worth seeing how much more it's heated up. Some of the details on this are really, really nice, really impressive. Yeah, that's pretty much the end, so let's quit out of that. So if we exit and then go into Ada64, so 37.9, so it actually stays pretty cool playing in an 8K video, which is super impressive. While we're in Ada64, let's have a look. So system, you can see it's the RK3588, 8 gig of RAM, 64 gig of storage. And you can see when it's idle, it toggles down to 1200, but it goes right up to 2200. And then we check all the Android, so Android 12 Snow Cone, 64-bit OS. So let's have a look at the website. Uh, so there's not loads of information on here. Obviously, you can contact them if you want more information. Android 12. There's a Debian and an Ubuntu version they're working on, and uh, they're working on, uh, I think, GPU acceleration. So that'll be interesting to see how well that runs. I can imagine it will run brilliant in software anyway, but to get GPU support will be really nice on that. Here's some close-up pictures of the device. Uh, there's the three operating systems they're planning to get running on it. So I'm just going to run a benchmark with uh, Geekbench 5, so run CPU benchmark. Okay, so that's all finished. So we've got a single core score of 596. We've got a multi-core score of 2369. Uh, I don't really do a lot with Geekbench, but it said it's uploaded the scores. Just flick through, obviously you can pause if there's something you need to check individually. And if I click on single core, and it shows where it is in comparison to some other devices. So you can see there, Galaxy S21. So what else is 596? What's that similar to? 556 is a Xiaomi Poco X3. And then multi-core, 2369 which is similar to a Xiaomi Redmi K20 Pro. Okay, so I've taken it apart just to have a look inside really, uh, and it was just four screws holding this plate in place, and this has got a connector which just connects on the front bit here, uh, and that's obviously for the audio jacks, and they're hot glued into place, so they're not going anywhere. Uh, there was four screws, as I mentioned. This is the lid, which is a solid piece of metal, and uh, that just slides in. There's some rails here and you can slide it into place. Uh, I won't put it back in because I wanted to show you the heatsink because I was intrigued as to how it was keeping itself so cool. And this heatsink is really quite effective. Uh, definitely didn't seem to get heated up in all my tests. I did quite a bit of gaming on it, playing around with it and it was great. Nice to see uh, a SATA connection just like a PC would have. And uh, I'll show you on the screenshot all the other bits because it's all labeled on the site now. They've updated. There wasn't very much information before, but there's loads of information now. So let's have a look. I've installed a different desktop environment because uh, it's just a bit easier with mouse and keyboard when it looks like this. Uh, and it gives you access to the apps nice and quickly. So let's launch Chrome and uh, go to the Mikotronics site. So if we scroll down, you can see there's various different mini PCs they do. Uh, they do do a board on its own. This isn't the same as the one I've got, although it is the same chip. So spec-wise, it's very similar. Uh, but mine has a bit more functionality on it. It is definitely more rectangular than this. This is quite a square board. So if we click on the one that I've been sent, you can see there's no pricing on there. There is an option to be able to contact them. So low power, high performance ARM based PC. They've got some Debian shots there, which I definitely like to have a look at when that's available. So it can support up to 16 gig, mine's eight gig. Got Wi-Fi 6, HDMI 2.1, uh, DisplayPort 1.4. You can see it says it works from a temperature between 40 to 80 degrees. I didn't get anywhere near 80 degrees when I was testing. These two big antennas, uh, I've definitely noticed the Wi-Fi is very good, very reliable. So they talk about the processor, which I've already mentioned, super powerful. And you see the graphics standards as well here, look, OpenGLS 1.1, 2, 3.2, and also Vulkan 1.2 as well. Talks about network compatibility here. 
and really good video support. So H.265 and VP9 decoder with 8K 60 FPS. And there's a load of video standards that it supports there. And more detailed information on all the connectivity. So I mentioned SATA before, that's SATA power next to it. A couple of GPIO options. Uh, audio, which I had uh, that front board was plugged into. DisplayPort, HDMI, dual Ethernet, gigabit Ethernet on the back. An HDMI input, which I haven't tested, um, but uh, yeah, that could be an interesting feature. And you've got a physical power button on the front. The Type-C connector that I was using, USB-C, uh, where I plugged my Dolphin bar into. So we've got really two USB 3 sockets, one of them being Type-C uh, and two USB 2s. Uh, and this one is labelled up as debug, so uh, I guess it's not usable in the system. I don't know, I didn't try it. And we've got the M.2 slot inside as well and that nice big heatsink. So yeah, definitely looking forward to trying Ubuntu and Debian on this. And loads more information if you want it. So I'll put a link to this in the description. Thanks very much to Mikotronics for sending this. I've really enjoyed testing it out and I'm going to try some more gaming on it. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.